I was introduced to jiu-jitsu over 15 years ago when I saw a skinny Brazilian dude choke out a pharmaceutical grade superhero in 57 seconds. Since then, I've studied with some of the best instructors on earth, but it wasn't until I trained with Eddie Bravo that I realized jiu-jitsu is way more than a world. It's an entire universe. Follow me as I navigate the twisters and turns of jiu-jitsu on the 10th planet. My name is Jason Eisner, and this is Mastering the System. Eddie Bravo on the third option. Did you see Paul Sass fight? In, uh, did you watch the Spike show from England, the UFC? Did you see my imitation of uh, Reggie Warren? Do it again for the camera. Who's yeah. Reggie Warren? The, oh, oh, that guy, the... The redneck interviewer? Yes. Hey, I'm Reggie Warren. I'm going to drink some beer and beat up some liberals and crash my tractor into a fence. Nice. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, anyways, Paul Sass. Ugh. A day before the UK show, I'm looking at the underground, and there's a headline that said, I like to be on my back. That's the, the headline. I like to be on my back. I've never read that shit, ever. Have you ever read that? I like to be on my back, and that's the headline? I'm like, who is this motherfucker? So I start reading, and what is this about? It totally caught my eye. And, and um, it said that he's 10 and 0, and he has like 10 triangles or something, right, this guy? Yeah. 10 and 0, 10, I'm like, what the fuck? I've never, there's never been a guy like this ever before, right? So, um, and then, you know, you read the interview, and he's like, I, you know, I'm not afraid to pull guard. I like to be on my back. I finish everybody off my back. I go, shit, I can't wait to, to watch this guy fight. So he fights, and sure enough, he goes out there, and you can just tell his stand-up is just a little awkward, and you can tell his stand-up is just not good. He shoots. The guy sprawls. He pulls guard. He attacks. He goes for a triangle. Guy pulls out. Stand up again. Stands up again. He shoots deep, deep enough so the guy has to defend. That if you, if you don't shoot that deep, the guy won't defend him. Just like, you know, get back up. You got to really commit to the takedown. And he, he pulls guard. Again, second time, he pulled, throws an arm bar, a triangle, the guy pulls up. He shoots again, still in the first round. Pulls guard, goes for omoplata. The guy pulls up. He pulls guard probably mm, at least four times. Four times he pulls guard. Then finally, minute left in the round, he pulls guard again, and he triangles the guy. Like, holy shit, he pulled it off. And it's probably because his striking isn't that great and his wrestling probably isn't that great, right? But you can still win that way. That, you've got to have that option. There's only three things you can do in a fight. You can stand and bang, or you can try to take the guy down to submit him or ground and pound a decision. Those are the only, those are the, 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 there's three things you can do. Those are the first two. The only other one is pull guard, right? There's nothing else. You can't jump out of the fence. You can't turn around and run. You either stand with the motherfucker or you try to take him down, get on top, submit him, or ground and pound him. Or pull guard. But in order to pull guard and have it be effective, have it be a smart strategy, you got to fucking be wicked off your back. When they talk about your guard, they can't say, yeah, he has a decent guard. It's all right. Mm -mm, that ain't going to work. Decent guard ain't going to work. They gotta talk about your fucking guard, it's amazing. Like, do not fucking go in his guard. Like, every tournament, you see there's a couple guys that are just guard masters, and every, all the coaches, like, don't, they're pulling guard, they're going, get on top of me. I'm letting you get on top of me. Look at Ryan Hall, Jeff Glover, they just sit on their ass, Marcelo Garcia, until they started talking shit, but then Marcelo, Marcelo just said, fuck it, I'll take you down, too. He started taking fools down. But Marcelo Garcia just sit on his ass. Who's the king of that? Jean Jacques. John Jock, watch all his matches. He just goes out and sits on his ass. You gotta be a bad motherfucker to just go out there and sit on your ass. You gotta be so confident. You gotta love being on your back. But anybody can do that. You just gotta work on it. Every time you roll, pull guard. Work yourself out of bad spots. Anyways, so most people, most people are, most fighters are only preparing for the two, the first two. 
standing and banging, and trying to take a guy down. No one's really prepare, preparing for the only other option is pulling guard. They're not preparing for that. Most people think that's the pussy way to fight. I'm not gonna go out there and pull guard. Well, if your guard sucks, I wouldn't recommend it either. If you don't have a good guard, I would, and I was coaching, I would go, don't fucking pull guard. Take his ass down, stand with him. Pulling guard is useless. Your guard is not developed, right? So, but there is that third option. If you're really good with that third option, and I would never coach anybody to say, just go out there and pull guard, unless I absolutely knew he was just a crazy wrestler or he was a vicious striker with good takedowns, then it would be, you know what we're doing, man. You're going in there, you're staying on the outside, you take a deep fucking shot, either a deep shot with a double, and then you pull, you'll either end up in butterfly guard, you better clinch quick, or three quarter guard, which is one butterfly and one leg around, or you'll end up in full guard sometimes, or you shoot for a single, do what Andre Gaval always does. He shoots for a single. If you don't fucking get it, he just falls down and he's in half guard. If you got wicked half guard, if you got w wicked deep half, then you're in the fucking game. That's not like some new concept. Noguera, that's how he beat Tim Sylvia. Tim Sylvia was fucking him up with that reach standing and Noguera's wrestling isn't the greatest. He couldn't take him down. If you remember the fight, how the fuck did he win? He pulled, he went for a single, he, Tim Sylvia defended it, he just sat down, he was in half guard, he basically pulled half guard, he did like a deep half sweep or some kind of sweep, gets on top, got side control, and he get it. How did Sean McCorkle beat Mark Hunt? You guys watched that fight? Did they even air that one? Sean McCorkle's just some guy from the underground who wants to be a fucking MMA star. He's fighting Mark Hunt, one of the most dangerous strikers on the planet, pretty hard to take down too, big ass Samoan. What did he do? He just fucking pulled guard, got him in a Kamor from the guard. Damien Mott has pulled half guard two or three times in his fight. Eric Schaefer. It's nothing new. I would never say, if I'm training a fighter, I would never say, don't worry about your wrestling, don't worry about your striking, just keep pulling guard. I would say, yes, keep pulling guard, but also work on your wrestling, also work on your striking. If you're fighting, if like when, when I'm coaching Denny, I'm like, it's always the same thing. Denny works on his wrestling. Set up three shots, Try to take his ass down. If you can't take him down in three shots, pull fucking guard and let's go. Right? Makes sense. Or you could take the chance to keep trying to take him down. Six minute matches, you're running out of time. You guys are doing takedowns the whole time. Fuck that, pull guard, make something happen, right? And then there's guys that just go out there and just pull guard right away. Fuck it. I'm never gonna really discourage someone from doing that. But my point with the Paul Sass fight was, he didn't have any striking, he didn't have any wrestling, and he fucking won. You know what I mean? The guy he was fighting could have been a gold medalist in Turkey for wrestling. International champion. He could have been the most vicious K1 striker, and it didn't matter. Because when you pull guard, you take away all that shit. Right? So true though. Right, Mr. Horwich? Yeah. Does that make sense? Always try to stand, test your stand up. If you're not sure, based on his record, based on the video you've seen, said, you know what, I could probably stand with this motherfucker. All right, stand with him. But as soon as you get fucked up, you better start taking him down. You can't take him down, what's next? What's the only other option? Pull guard. Or he's fucking you up standing and you say, fuck it, I'm not gonna pull guard, I'm just gonna keep standing. Mm. Odds not so good, right? Yeah. Or you could keep trying to take him down, yet he stuffed your shots for two rounds straight. Here comes the third round. You gonna try to take him down third round again? Pull fucking guard, and you have a round to make something happen. And you better make sure your half guard and your fucking, your rubber guard and your whatever fucking guard is tip top, razor sharp, wicked, amazing, phenomenal. When, Sh when Shinya Yogi pulls guard, no one ever says, ah, fuck that, I'm gonna take a piss. They're like, oh shit, something's gonna happen. Oh shit, it's about to go down. Is he gonna be able to pull it off, right? When he fought Jay-Z, every time he fucking pulled guard, it was like, oh shit, is he gonna make something happen? So the moral of that story is, work on that third option. The I've been in the business for 10 fucking years, making money, non-jujitsu, commentating, in the business, watching not only fighters come and go, 95% of fighters come and go. Not even, not just fighters, fight camps. Fight camps that didn't address the third option. That's where they go. They get in a situation where they can't take the dude down and the guy's better at him striking. You know how often that comes up? 
That shit comes up fucking often. You can't take the dude down. And the higher you rise, the more often it comes up. That could be like every fucking fight. Dude has slightly better wrestling than you or way better wrestling than you. Even if you're a fucking wrestler. You've been wrestling 20 years. There's dudes that have been wrestling 30 years. And they've made strides the last couple years. And you ain't taking them down. You know what I mean? We're seeing strikers that never wrestled and you can't take them down. Connor wrestled 26 years. Had a hard time taking down KJ Noons. We're seeing that a lot. If a guy just focuses just on take down the fence, man, he can stuff after a while, after three or four or five years, stuffing takedowns, you stuff a couple, boom, you get a shot, changes the whole fight. So you have to work that third option. Right, Matt Porridge? That third option. That's, right. why, that's why fighters come and go. That's so. why they come. I see them come and go like I worked at a record label, like I worked at Capitol. And you, you, you know, if, you're, if you pay attention to the music business, 98% of bands that get signed to major labels, they're gone. After one or two albums, three albums, they're gone. They don't survive. Just, so like, it's like, I'm working at that record label, and I'm like, these bands are coming up, and I'm like, you're probably ain't gonna be here in a couple of years, man. You know what I mean? That's how I'm looking at these fighters. I'm like, man. All that, every division, all these new fighters coming up, all the new ones, I'm there backstage hanging out with them, and I'm like, man, this guy doesn't have the answer for John Fitch. He's 170. I'm like, there's, I mean, you got to have the answer for the elite wrestler. What are you going to do when Sean Shirt fucking comes after you? You know what I mean? Frankie Edgar. These elite wrestlers, they're all at the top. How are you going to handle Chael Sonnen? You've been striking your whole life. He's probably going to take you down. So that's how I look at these fighters coming up. I'm like, man, you got to have the answer. you got to have the answer. And what was the answer for the elite wrestler when it came to Anderson Silva? It wasn't his striking, it wasn't his wrestling, it was his guard. That saved his ass. That saved his ass. That was one of the greatest matches of all fucking time. And it ended in a triangle in the fifth fucking round. Straight up MMA Rocky. Right? Got to have that third option. Quarter cleaning too many stop to mechanic. Nabil? your back, please. <clears throat> oh, no, no, I'm on my back, I'm sorry. So we're gonna work the mechanic, which is a lockdown sweep. You need a good lockdown, you need a good whip, and you need to develop wrist control. This is all about controlling the guy on top's wizard, grabbing his wrist. He's got the wizard, you bring in the underhook, you grab his wrist and you control it, pinching your elbows tight as much as possible. If you can control that wrist, for a couple seconds, however long it takes for you to underhook the far leg and get flat on your back so that you could whip. Remember, we're not whipping when we're on our side. We're whipping up to our side, but if we, got, we, we want to go back the other way, we got to get flat on our back and then whip. If you whip it and you want to go this way and you whip and you're still on your side, you're not doing anything. You got to sneak and get flat on your back and then you whip. So you whip, that wrist control is taking away his base on the other side. If you develop good wrist control, this is a high percentage sweep, if you can grab that wrist. The hard part is getting in there and controlling, grabbing the wrist initially. Because sometimes the guy has a wizard and he's, he's constantly sinking uh, his wizard in for a Darce attempt to get a vice grip or something. All right? But if he leaves his wizard in the middle where you can grab it, bam, all you need to grab is that far leg, get flat on your back and go. Unless, while you're doing that, your wrist control sucks and he pulls the wizard out. Right, so we're developing risk control, we're developing um, whip up awareness. A lot of people are having trouble with their whip up. They're just not getting flat. You gotta get flat before you whip. You can't whip on your side. All right, so we're starting, we're gonna start with a mini stomp. All right, anytime you start a, a lockdown half drill, we're gonna start with the mini stomp here, which means we're working on getting the lockdown from a bad spot. Hard to get the lockdown in this leg, his knee's up. In order to get, the, to get the lockdown, I need his knee on the ground. How do I get his knee on the ground? He doesn't want to put his knee on the ground. He's avoiding the lockdown. So we're just going to go in there, dive in, and grab the quarter clinch here. Dove in. We got the quarter clinch. He's probably going to frame off my neck. 